Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, let me start by acknowledging my co-author sitting down the back there, Professor Jim Prattley. Uh, jointly, we represent, of course, our own universities, but more broadly, uh, we're here representing the deans of agriculture. So I would like to speak on behalf of all of the universities, uh, our shared problems and our shared opportunities, rather than this being a University of Queensland presentation. Agriculture sector education, not, not a very good picture at all. So here we track through time from 1984 through to 2012, uh, making a comparison between the level of tertiary education in the general community, the red, and the agricultural community, the blue. Now, we can cut this several ways. So I could have put up data here showing TAFE level education, uh, vocational education, or I could have put up data showing completion of year 12, and it's all the same. So I don't think this is uniquely the agriculture community has fewer people with degrees. Overall, the agriculture community is less well educated than the community in general. And this is a pretty bizarre thought, isn't it, that agriculture nowadays is not you know, gee, if you can drive a tractor, you can do everything. It's a high-tech, uh, large-scale enterprises which demand a lot of knowledge to be successful. And so education, higher levels of education than the rest of the community would actually be a good idea for us rather than considerably lower. And the universities have got something to answer for in this. Uh, here's across a period of time, 2001 to 2014, so a bar for each year, how many graduates we as a group of universities have been churning out? Uh, not a good story at all. Over the last couple of years, there's been an increase in enrolments in a lot of universities, so there'll be a little bit of a kick up over the next couple of years, but it's modest relative to that really quite substantial reduction. Uh, and I'm sorry, but the University of Queensland is the biggest of the contributors to that reduction. It's not that we wanted to take less students, less students have come to us. Let me move on to what the quality of our education institutions is like. So how good an education would we be able to provide the students who come to us? So this is from the Australian uh, excellence in Research for Australia Quality Assessments. Um, a five for a discipline area is well above world standards. And if we track across here, we've got quite a few institutions across a range of agricultural disciplines who are ranking well above world standards, uh, a number that are ranking above world standard. Our publications or the outputs right across the board, 100% of them above world standard. So a stunning outcome from that assessment. And as we've gone through the era rounds, the scores are getting better. That's partly that the universities are getting better at playing the game of getting good scores, but it's also Australian research standing in agriculture is getting better and better. And I'll give you another measure of that in a moment. Similarly, if we look at, at how our universities are staffed, we've got lots of professors and associate professors, so lots and lots of well-qualified people on staff to teach. And finally, my last measure of are our institutions any good is where our international rankings are. Universities love these, okay? We absolutely love to be able to say, ha, I'll beat you. Um, and so, of course, I did put up the National Taiwan University um, ranking, which puts UQ at the top, and I put it on that side, so it's more obvious to you. As, as we've moved to the 2015 values, UQ's gone up to seven, Western Australia's gone up to 30, Melbourne's gone up to 38. So Australian universities are not only ranking stunningly well, but our trajectory is upwards, okay? Have a little bit of a think about the scale of those numbers. There are 10,000 universities around the world that teach agriculture in one way or another. So to have a group of universities all in the top 50 
it is remarkably good. So the point that I wish to make thus far is we're not churning out enough graduates to meet our industry's demand, so our agriculture industries are underqualified. We have institutions which are very, very well able to teach and deliver a good quality student. With some limitations, and, and this is not uniquely in agriculture, the student to staff ratio across education is going up. So where I was fortunate in sitting in uh, classes of three or four students to learn advanced soil chemistry, we can't, none of the universities can teach in that way anymore. But I don't think the absolute content matters so much as we teach students to think. So uh, while this is a limitation, it's not a profound one. Graduate demand. So a measure of graduate demand is how many of our graduates get a job when they finish. And so here's the line for agriculture tracking through time 2003 to 2014. Uh, compared to environment jobs, compared to the total. So agriculture sits above the averages and does so year in, year out. So if you get a degree in agriculture, you're more likely to get a job than, than other professions. Unfortunately, Graduate Careers Australia confounds agriculture with environment. And you can see there, the environment graduates are not doing anywhere near as well as the ag graduates. And because there's 70% of that group are environment graduates and only 30% are agriculture graduates, the average is pulled well down. So when you look on Graduate Careers website, you're given a value that says, Employment's not that much better than the average and salaries are not that much better than average. But in fact, employment for ag graduates and salaries for ag graduates is considerably better than the average. Uh, indeed, data for, for the next couple of years because the real winner's been the geologists. With the mining sector tanking, geologists are not getting jobs and not getting big pay packets. Agriculture's even going to look a lot better. Just that little box at the bottom, uh, some work done by the deans of agriculture with, with help from Rimfire and others, is to assess how many jobs are advertised that require a tertiary qualification. And over, over a period of years, so a value of 4,000 jobs, it, it varies year to year, and the last year's been a little bit lower than the couple of years before, but we sit around that 4,000 jobs per year advertised that need tertiary qualifications. The universities, all of the universities put together churn out somewhere around 800 graduates. Yeah. And as I say to student groups, what does that mean? Yeah. Just the whole supply and demand curve thing. They're going to get a job. So what's the problem? Our universities are some of the best in the world. There are more jobs out there than we produce graduates. Salaries are reasonable and increasing. Um, and the quality of jobs is both reasonable to good. They're, they're good jobs in agriculture. But school leavers do not apply for entry to ag degrees. There is the absolute sticking point. It's that transition from high school into university that we struggle with. Compare it to law. Um, in Brisbane, our fellow institution, QUT, will take 1,500 students into law this year. Um, only a small proportion of them will ever work as a lawyer. And they won't get paid as much as the ag graduates get paid anyway. Why? I think it's because there's a whole lot of TV programs about how cool it is to be a young lawyer. And I'm not thinking the farmer needs a wife here. So we do have an image problem. How do, how do we have a different image? Here's what I think Australia's uh, current agriculture image is. Um, too much the image of catastrophe in the agriculture sector. Droughts, low commodity prices, and the perception of a lot of kids leaving school is this is what a degree in agricultural science would have you doing. It couldn't be further from the truth. Compare that to our competition's image the mining sector, the resource sector. You know, cool jobs. Eh? Here we are, the guys who are going to change the world. 
I argue to our industries and I argue to you as a group, we need a new agriculture image. A cool image of great jobs, sophisticated jobs, jobs which are changing the world. And we're increasingly seeing industries putting themselves forward this way. I think the cotton industry in particular stands out as, as an industry who've got their messaging better over the years. Um, and if I have to put the finger on an industry which needs to do more, it's my Queensland sugar industry, who are more likely to stand in front of a camera and tell you why the industry's in crisis than tell you that it's a great place to work. Because they think they're speaking to the minister rather than prospective workers in their, in their industry. So to finish, Neil's J-curve theory for agriculture. Both a personal recollection of, of what's happened through my professional life, but also a view to the future. So when I finished high school uh, and entered university, I was a very strong student at school. I'm very good at chemistry. What could I do that I could use chemistry in anger? Agriculture. Because agriculture at that point in time, what I was seeing on television as a child was the way that agriculture was changing the world. We'd gone through the Green Revolution, so the, the pictures of children with distended stomachs had disappeared off the news in the evenings because of the Green Revolution. Uh, we had things like CSIRO, New Wool, um, all sorts of new farming practices coming in, which were on television. These were exciting news stories, good news stories about the science of agriculture. So for a young person leaving school thinking, what can I do in my life as a scientist, agriculture looked like a good place to be. The last 20 years have been quite different. If I turn on the TV in the evening, um, these are the sorts of, of things that I see reported. Uh, fertiliser contaminating the planet, uh, GMOs, Frankenstein foods, they will almost certainly send you sterile, and that's if they don't kill you. Um, tasteless strawberries, uh, yeah. And, and excess of every commodity you could think of. Butter mountains, wine lakes, low commodity prices. That's been the news, that's been the perception that kids at school have of agriculture as a potential place to work. But agriculture's doing good things again. I don't know whether you've noticed, but just over the last few years, we've had reports on TV of good things in agriculture, the, the various improvements in the way we can produce food. We've had prime ministers speaking about soils. Wow, think about that as a soil scientist, an unimaginable concept. Never happened before, but now we as a nation are talking about agriculture, talking about the resource that, that runs agriculture. So, I finish with this. I think the future of agricultural science is assured, but it's going to be very different from the past. And the young people coming in have an exciting future ahead of them. It's nice to see the bump up in enrolments. I'm hoping that this is the start of my projected J-curve. Thank you.